Welcome everyone. My name is James Graves and this is Night Journey Rewind. So happy to have you with us again. I'm so happy to have you with me again, let's just say that. But I've got a great interview. I met this gentleman, ooh, I don't know what, it was before the pandemic. Way before, yeah, yeah. Yeah, way before the pandemic. And I was just listening, I said, man, you know, I love his music. So we had a chance to have a conversation years ago. He's uh, put out about two or three other projects during that time with his latest project out, not with his his late wife on the cover of the of the of the CD, which obviously I think this is dedicated to her, and it's called "You Remind Me." But we're gonna get back into Greg Murphy, talk about what he's been doing this time. I saw him. I kind of keep up with him on social media. Thank you, social media. And uh, I just said, "Hey, man, let's sit down and talk about your new project, and let's just catch up." Ladies and gentlemen, pianist Greg Murphy. How you doing, bro? I'm doing okay, man. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to, to, to speak with you. Yeah. First of all, let me say this. Uh, you know, he started, I think it was like 1991 at a high school band. From there, uh, he went on. No, 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 no. I, I, I was in high school in 1977. I graduated. Oh, I, I wish I was that young. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me be correct in 1977. Then you got the opportunity to... Uh... And I didn't play in high school. Yeah, I didn't play really? in high school. Yeah, no. Okay, well, you know what? Correct me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I started off doing, taking piano lessons, but I didn't play much when I was in high school. I was into sports, you know, I was into baseball and hockey and stuff. And then uh, I got into a band in 1981 when I moved back to Chicago from, from, uh, from, from college. And I started playing in pop bands in Chicago and, and a, mostly, you know, like one band, but then I, I freelanced with a couple other bands. And then I, 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 uh, was playing like pop covers and stuff like that and, and fusion and jazz and stuff like that, original stuff. So we, we did a recording. We opened up for the Dells in Chicago. It was a band called, uh, lightning flash thunder roar, which, which we had to, uh, to shorten to LFTR, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, and we, you know, and we, we did some good gigs. We, we, uh, um, but we, we rehearsed a lot. So we, we really got tight. And then, then I got into the Northern, I went to school, went back to college in Chicago, went to Northern Illinois University, was in the Northern Illinois big band, UIC big band for a hot second, you know, not, not too long. And then in 85, I met Ellis Marcellus and then, uh, I met him in Chicago. He was he was actually with with his sons went in Brantford and he was at a college yeah I think he was at North Northern University Northeastern University um, some somewhere and I went to see him and then he was playing at the showcase and uh, I went to see him at the showcase because I missed the the seminar I missed the workshop and I was like uh, I was like hey Mr Marcellus and all three of them turned around and I was like no you no Mr Marcellus <laughs> and he told me come by the showcase I came by the showcase I said hey man can you give me a piano lesson and he said yeah we'll figure something and so so he he came to my house and gave me a piano lesson we picked him up at the, at the showcase which was at the Blackstone Theater at the time this had to be 1983 80 yeah I think it was 1983 and he said apply for a grant and he said apply for an NEA grant and I applied and I got it and I went to New Orleans in in uh, 1985 through 87 and I studied with Ellis for I had a, got, a, got a little grant and 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 moved to New and after I studied I was like man I'm working <laughs> wasn't working that much in Chicago New Orleans had a lot of places where you could play solo piano and I got with this and I got with uh, I replaced Harry Connick Jr. in this band called the the New Orleans Jazz Couriers and uh uh, Victor Goins was in the band and uh, and and some other people that became my friends over the years and uh, yeah and we opened up for McCoy and I remember I saw McCoy at the showcase right at, at the jazz showcase same place where I met Ellis in Chicago and I hit on and I hit on McCoy for a lesson and I said well you know I said I'm going to New Orleans to study with Ellis and then a couple of years and, and he said well I said man I really want to study with you McCoy <laughs> and um, and so I saw McCoy, I opened up for McCoy with that band in, in New Orleans and, uh, and McCoy said, I said, remember McCoy, I met you in Chicago and I wanted to study with you. And he gave me the best compliment I've ever gotten in my life, you know, even, even if it wasn't true, you know, he said, well, I guess you don't need any lessons anymore. You know? <laughs> okay. Cause he, it's cause he heard me play. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, I, you know, 
So he might have heard those five minutes that I was got lucky and actually played something decent. You know. <laughs> <laughs> how was it? Uh, how was it? Um, being under the direction and being taught by Ellis Marcellus. Um, it was cool. It was like loose, you know, it was loose. We did, we just did some lessons at his house and we did some lessons at a place he was teaching at called the uh, New Orleans Center for Creative Arts. And um, so we did, we, we, it was cool though, because we did some, you know, he showed me things that I show to my students today. I, he, you know, they're, they're these two, five, one lessons. And I remember she said, learn these two, five, there were these two, five, one voicings, right? He said, learn these particular two, five, ones, right? Let me play. So those particular two, five, ones, he told me to learn. And I call them today, I call those my Ellis voicings, even though he didn't invent those. But I, that's the way I explain those voicings to my students. I can't and, think of the name right off the hands because those chords remind me of a few songs that yeah. kind of with piano players that kind of started off with that type of a melody before they actually get into the rhythm of the song. Boy, I wish I could. Maybe by the time the end of this interview, I might remember some of it. And I think McCoy was one of them. I just can't think of the songs. But there was a few musicians that kind of always kind of start off with those chord combinations and then get into their piece. Well, the they're, they're, yeah, yeah, they're, they're typical introductory chords too, because you, you can do one, six, two, five, right? And those, and depending on the voicings you want to use. Mm -hmm. But I, I remember I auditioned for, um, for Winton's band, right? Back then, right before Marcus Roberts got in the band. This had to be 86, 87. And, and Winton said, you know, he came over to my house, so we played and stuff like that. And Winton said, uh, played me some two, five, ones. <laughs> And I and I hadn't learned them yet. I had, I was you know I was I was I was so busy learning you know living and enjoying life in New Orleans. I mean I was playing a little bit, but I didn't really study hard. So, so I kind of fluffed on those two five ones and 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 of course did you know didn't get a didn't get a call back from Winton. <laughs> now didn't you? But didn't you later on kind of play with Bradford for a minute? No, I you sat in with him once. You yeah. sat in, okay. Yeah. okay. I sat in with him at the Vanguard, but, but yeah, no, that's it. Yeah, no. So what was it that uh, said, you know what, I like this, I want to play this. What made you just say, you know what, I really need to take this more serious and really get into it if this is really what I want to do? What was the key factor? Well, um, you know, I started playing with, as soon as I got to New York, I got, I started playing with uh, Rashid Ali. Mm. And... Uh, and we did, did, we did like one tour and I was like, oh man, I went to Europe, man, I made it. So I had a job at the library at Columbia University because I was living up around there and I quit my job, you know, I quit my day gig a little bit too soon <laughs> because I thought I had made it because I went to Europe. So, you know, after a while I was like, oh man, it's, so I, I knew I needed to study and I, and I, I was lucky back then because you had, a, you could get a lot of gigs. I went, took your bands to Japan a couple times and, um, it was there were some opportunities to work a lot back then, but I still wasn't that good. I mean, I was OK, but I knew I needed to, to further my study. So I went to um, I, I uh, enrolled at uh, City College where Ron Carter was teaching mm -hmm. and he was one of the teachers. We had a lot of classes together and uh, and we're still in touch today. He actually helped me with the with the arrangement for for one of the tracks, uh, Nancy with the Laughing Face. He helped me with that with that arrangement because it was a kind of a last minute decision for me to include that on the album, and uh, and obviously it was, you know, something that reminds me of my wife, my my late wife Nancy, and uh, but anyway, so so I studied back in going back you know back to 1990, uh, I studied uh, at City College where I had to study classical first, so so I had to do like these Bach. Um, uh, four-part inventions, and I had to read and write that stuff. It was it was hard, you know. And I, w I was still bullshitting back then. Excuse my language, but <laughs> but I, w I wasn't really taking care of business because I was I was doing some crazy stuff, you right, know, hanging right. in New York, and and I would fall asleep in Ron Carter's class, and he would like, "You're not going to fall asleep in my class," <laughs> you know. But it was not, he was still still cool. He came to one of my gigs. And I was doing a duo gig on this place called Green Street on Green Street Cafe on, in, in Soho a long time ago. And he came to the gig and I didn't even see him come to the gig. 
And, and I said, yeah, Ron Carter was here. I was like, man, because I invited him. I didn't even see him because he mm -hmm. kind of snuck in and snuck out. And um, but he gave me a nice critique and stuff like that. So, you know, Ron has been helpful, you know, so teachers over the years have been helpful, you know, even, you know, going back to school, you know, I'm always learn trying to learn how to play better. You well, know? you know, who was some of the musicians besides Miles and a lot of musicians says, I, I, I would ask him, <clears throat> I would ask him, so do you think that you've gotten to the point where you really feel like you achieved something or you really, you know, mastered your your music and they always said, no, never. And I'm always looking, or this is what Calvin Keyes was always say. He says, always looking for that perfect note. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said, okay. Oh, that's what always, he always says it. Just looking for that perfect note. Yeah, well, I, th I think I think Ron used to say, "Well, there's only twelve notes, so you know, you just got to figure out how." Cold is that, huh? <laughs> and for me, it's very difficult. But you know, for them that's been playing music for a while, it kind of seems to be a little simple. And then you know, I played with Ornette Coleman. You know, he 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 had called me to to do some stuff, um, and uh, he he showed me some of his uh, uh, um, harmonic theory, and he basically says there are only three keys. You know. And he kind of showed me how that relates, how how four different keys are kind of the same key, you know, mm. built on the extensions like um, like C major, E minor, G major, B minor. You know, he kind of always kind of related those to the as, as one thing, you know, and that's just like, you know, the two, five, one is three is three keys, right? Two, five, one, right? But that's one thing. That too, the five, the one is one is one thing to think of too. So it's kind of related to that in a sense, you know, Ornette's theory a little bit, part of his theory, and uh, but a lot of it is not very well. And I wish I wouldn't have been messing up or been BSing so much at the time because I could have. There's so much more I could have learned from him, you know. But you know, I was. I was but but since you remembered a lot of things that he said in his theory, you still want to practicing and using that now in your playing mode. Yeah, I mean, it, conceptually, at least, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, man, you've been able, you've been so blessed to be able to travel around. And like I said, I watch you, I always see you on, you know, social media. You've been able to go here, play there. Did you ever think that, I don't want to say big, big, but did you ever think that you would be able to be exposed as you are as a piano player, especially playing this great American classical art form? Um, well, I always thought that I would, I would be, do way better than I have been doing, you know? So, so I'm, you know, I'd be, you know, I don't know what the term is, but, but I'm not at the place where I think I should have been or should, could be. And not because of any external circumstances, although th those play a factor. It's, it's like, you know, if I was taking care of more business, I could have been further. So, or I could have traveled more, been working more, or you know, had had better, you know, had mm -hmm. had, had better ability to, to pay my rent next month. What was it? My rent comes up uh, in a week. <laughs> so, it's, so, so you know, so it, it's um, you know, it's never easy. You know, it's never Trust easy. You my name is James Graves. This is Night Journey Rewind, the podcast, and we're visiting with pianist Greg Murphy. Let's, you know, I want to get into, into your latest project, but what goes into you, the songs, and putting a project together, putting your music together to record? I mean, how do you come up with the ideas of some of the songs, the names, and the melodies? Was it all from experience or something, or just a whole bunch of music just rolling around in your head waiting for you to write it down well most of my projects i at least the last several projects have been half originals right and half cover songs so so it's always about okay I, these are some cover songs i like and i want to rearrange them um and or or kind of keep them close to what they were and so um, so that's part of the process is, is thinking about songs that I, that I like that, that other people, you know, like, at least they like the original versions, right? And there's so many different versions, so many cool versions of, 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 of all these songs that have throughout history, right? So, 
so I, part of it is what I, you know, I, th I think that's, you know, for me, I think it helps with like radio, helps with recognition. It helps with like, like the audience, you know, they, they, people want to hear what they, what they've heard before. So that's part of it. And then the other half is, is original stuff. So, so some, some, some music comes kind of while I'm improvising or just doodling around. Oh, here's a melody or, oh, here's some a chord, you know, most of my stuff comes through harmony, through chord mm -hmm. changes, right? So, um, you know, so I'm thinking of, like, I wrote this song called Nancy's Fantasy, right? <laughs> So that came from chords, and then then I think, okay, what else can I put? Right. So I think of what can come after, right? And so so we do this. So so that song had, changes keys and stuff like that. So so I'm thinking, you know, and then it changes rhythms. So that's something that that just comes from, you know, one one chord at a time, you know. Mm -hmm. One chord progression at a time leads to the next, and then, and then some stuff is like is just simple, like the blues, right? So the, I guess there's a term called contrafact, where people write uh, a melody over a, uh, an existing set of chords, and and people have been doing that forever with the blues, right? Once people, especially when once people started codifying it into twelve bars, right, back in the twenties and. Because the blues, like some of the blues have, would, would change. It'd be 11 bars, one chorus, 13 the next. Right. Not the next, you know, and, and, but, but anyway, so, so that's a form, right? It's a blues form that's been around forever. So I'll write a, a melody over the blues, you know? Um, so that's, that's, that's my process to, the, to most people. Excuse me. All right. Let's talk about what went into this project, just a little bit, uh, the, your latest project called You Remind Me. Um, you know, you have your wife, your lovely wife is on the cover of your, of, your, of your CD. Talk about that whole process, you know, mentally being able to do this, you hear you losing the loss of your loved one, you want to remember her and your music. Mm -hmm. um, my last record, Cool Water, right? We, me and my, my wife, Nancy, we went to Kenya. And uh, so, and, 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 uh, and we, and there was a, um, you know, so, so, so that, that record kind of came from our trip to Africa and part, partly. So, so once, the, once I produced that record and put it out and it was on the radio, as soon as it came out, Nancy got diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. So, so right at that point, that was, that was like three years ago. And, um, and right at that point, it was like, wow. Um, so everything was like, everything was messed up. Everything for me was messed up, but we were fighting. We, we fought it. We, 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 we went and, and started getting treatment. And, uh, but that was right during my, the campaign of cool water. So I, I, I couldn't really concentrate on, on that, but I still, I knew I had to pay bills and stuff like that. So I knew I need to keep working. And so at that point, um, she was doing well and we went, we, we decided to, so after that record was over, I said, okay, I need to do another record. I need to keep this, this thing going. I need to keep working. Um, and we were, we were fighting cancer. We were thinking about curing it, right? And curing her cancer. And I wrote the song called The Cure. And uh, so that, I said, I know that's gonna be on the album. And I was invited to, um, I was invited to uh, Ireland. And, um, and then Nancy met me in London on that same trip. And, and I played that with, with my friend Lindley Hamilton in London. Um, in, 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 in Belfast, in Northern Ireland mostly, we played, uh, we played The Cure, you know, we played that song. And, um, and then uh, Malou, who's, Malou Bovar, who sings on the new album and who sang on my Summer Breeze album, um, she said, you know, let's get Nancy over to London. So, so she helped, um, uh, so, so Nancy met me in London, right? And so, because I was thinking with Malou, let's work on um songs i had ideas for songs for the new album and so she said let's bring nancy over here so we went and, we, and nancy came to london 
And, uh, and, but in the hotel, I had this laptop and I had my song. I said, I want to do a night to remember. I want to do, um, the Shalimar song, right? That was like the first, I wanted to do a version of morning, um, by Al Jarreau. I wanted to do nights over Egypt. So that was my focus, you know, and I was thinking about, you know, a lot of those songs had night titles. So I was thinking night morning and I was thinking about night music or ladies of the night or something like that. So. <laughs> But, uh, but, you know, Nancy and Malou were there with me. Nancy was there with me about thinking about, you know, those songs. And, and so that's how that started. So mm -hmm. we were, and then, um, and then I was able to, you know, work on some arrangements. And then I was able to take Nancy to, to Paris um, a few months later. And uh, we had a great time. And, um, and all the time I was thinking about, you know, I, I would like to record. And then so I, I reached out to Wailing City Sound and he said, you know what, we're, Financially, we're not doing what we used to. We're not giving the artists any, you know, and any, he said, anything I'm not committed to right now, I'm not coming up with any, I'm not giving out any money. You're going to have to come up with some money, some funding. So that took a while for me to wrap my head around that and start coming up with money. So I just, I recorded, produced it myself. Okay. And uh, about a year ago, and, um, and it took a long time going back and forth to different studios with the, you know, especially with the pop stuff, you know, with the oh, nights right, 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 right. the strings and and having uh, Zach Brock come in the studio and play some violin and adding overdubs and figuring out, oh, this vocal's not going to work. I got to take this out. I put this in, you know, so dozens and dozens of times going back to the studio. I started out in Van, Van Gelder on February 9th which happens to be my mom's birthday, February 9th. It was her 87th birthday of last year. And then it got released on her 88th birthday, February 9th of this year. So it took a year to come out, which is, which is longer than normal for me for to take, to, to come out. But anyway, but it took a lot of stuff. And then all, during all that time, you know, you know, Nancy's dealing with, with, you know, Nancy was such a beautiful person. She would always help me with, with all every step of the way um the process of, of she would help me listen to takes over the years she would come to the studios and bring sandwiches and stuff if she was like working in the city or something if i was in queens or whatever and uh, you know she would you know she would she would help me listen to takes and, and stuff like that right, too right. And, and, and let everybody give them the information where they can be able to, i've listened to it i love the album and I lo i've always liked the song night over egypt so <laughs> that one. Then you also did another one that's pretty well called A Night to Remember. Mm -hmm. And I was enjoying the cure. So there's like a few of them that take off and the others that I said, oh, okay. You know, mm -hmm. I was loving it. So for people to be able to pick up um, your project, give them the information, how they'd be able to get it. Um, right now you can get it anywhere, anywhere music is sold. You know, the, all, most people get it in their online platforms or whatever. So, you know, App, I, I prefer if, if you're going to get it from one of those streaming services, Apple has the highest res right now mm -hmm. and it sounds better through Apple because we made a digital master, but you can also get it through my website, gregmurphyjazz.com. I'm also going to make some high res um, tracks available for anybody who wants to, to uh, you know, you can download, you can buy albums from me, you can buy them from Wailing City Sound. Uh, you can buy it from Amazon. It's it's out there now, so you can get it from from pretty much. When you're anywhere. coming back out to Southern, when you're coming back out to California, ah, uh, no plans right now. Um, you gonna send me a ticket? <laughs> hey, maybe later on down because you know if you if if you notice that you know I am producing a show in San Francisco once a month. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and uh, but right, man, there's a lot of not gonna get along, and there's a lot of great musicians in the Bay Area. But I want to build it up so I can bring some, you know, some other names out here. Until that happens, you know. Yeah, and then you know. Wish list. Yeah, there's and there's ways I can get out there too. So so just let, let's keep in touch on that. You don't have to yeah, come because up. I know it's like when <laughs> Eric did it. Eric was just looking. He had a gig in San Francisco at the boat. Which Eric? You talking about Eric? Eric? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. then he wound up, you know, getting other gigs with this was happening. There's this guy that just called me the other day and said, hey, man, I'm coming into L.A., which I feel good because they're starting to hear about the spot. Say, so, hey, man, we're coming into town. And if there's a way that you can book me in, I sure like to do that. So that's been pretty now, The place is in Pasadena or somewhere oh, around there? San Francisco, downtown San Francisco. Oh, it's in San Francisco. Oh, okay. In the Haight-Ashbury district, Lower Haights. 
So you're are you traveling back back up there back in once the a summer? month? Was that like five hours or something? Yeah, by by driving six hours driving. Six yeah. hours, okay. You know, okay. it's only an hour by flight. You know, so. Oh, okay. So yeah, you know, I would like to get out there for sure. I would like to get out there. I was just in like like we talked about before. I was just in Santa Barbara, mm -hmm. and visiting a, a friend and and a former student. And um, and his dad and and, uh, and and was able to uh, visit with the with Marta um, at the Marta Oveas at the uh, the the KC KCSB I think at the, the radio station. Oh you know? yeah 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 Santa Barbara right right. And this is actually and I did a I did an interview with uh, San Francisco with with um, with the San Francisco San Mateo station. Oh KCSM right. Yeah KCSM I did an interview with those guys with Pete Falico on his Doodlin Lounge so so yeah I mean it's nice to 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 have some some California connections so I I would love to get I love California so I would love to get back out there soon. Well Greg I, my time is almost up um, and I I enjoyed our conversation as always. Uh, we're going to definitely stay in touch. Uh, I have a, let me just say this, I, I, I have a radio show on this internet station that plays every Sunday morning from, well, for you in New York, it would be, I think, 9 to 11. For me out here, it's like 5 to 7. So I, I, I got some of your music now, so I definitely will be including that in into my shows. 5 so, a.m. to 7 a.m. or 9 p.m.? Uh, no, it's a.m. For me in oh. L.A., it's from... Five to seven, which I still don't like, but hey, it, it is. Oh, okay. It is. Okay. But for you in New York, that would be five, six, seven. That what would that be? Eight o'clock. Eight, eight would be eight to ten. Yeah. Yeah, yeah eight to ten. Yeah. So that happens every Sunday. <coughs> so I got okay. that going on. So okay. Let's just stay in touch. And uh, man, I enjoy this conversation. I know it was short, but you know, we had we had a longer one last time. So this one was just like a really update. You got this great project out called "You Remind Me." And uh, I suggest everybody pick it up because it really is a nice project, man. But I mean, everything you've done, man, has been nice. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you, James. I appreciate you. So uh, let's stay in contact so much. OK, my name is James Graves. This is Nigeria Rewind. And we've been visiting with pianist Greg Murphy. He was 